Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing how the suprachiasmatic nucleus is able to affect the release of melatonin from the pineal gland. Now we're going to be looking at this figure pretty heavily over here. We're going to be ignoring the right side of the figure over here that has to do with uh, constriction or dilation of the iris. Instead, we're going to focus on the left side of the image uh, with light actually striking the retina. So we've got light right here, and light is going to strike the retina. And within the retina, there are specific cells that are different from the normal you know, photoreceptors or ganglion cells that you've normally talked about in an anatomy course, and they're called intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. That's a tongue twister, so we'll just call them IPRGCs. Okay? These are ganglion cells in the retina of the eye that are really just sensitive to light. These cells are not the ones that are going to be responsible for color discrimination, color vision, that kind of stuff. Their major function is going to be to transmit information about how much light there is to the brain. And they're going to transmit that information through something called the retinohypothalamic tract, or RHT. So this right here, right here where my mouse is, this is supposed to be the retinohypothalamic tract. And they send that information directly to the suprachiasmatic nucleus, or SCN. Now, you've heard about the suprachiasmatic nucleus as being what regulates the circadian rhythm. And that makes sense because it's the first structure here that receives any information about that degree of light. So again, from these IPRGCs, the information about that light is transmitted through the retinohypothalamic tract to the suprachiasmatic nucleus. And we're first going to consider the case where there is light. And so these IPRGCs become activated, and since they're glutamatergic, they're going to release glutamate, which activates the suprachiasmatic nucleus. So when there is light, the suprachiasmatic nucleus is actually activated. Okay? Now, the suprachiasmatic nucleus, as you can see right here, can activate this thing called the DMH. This is the dorsomedial hypothalamic nucleus. Okay? Suprachiasmatic nucleus activates this structure via glutamate. So the suprachiasmatic nucleus can also release glutamate. It activates the dorsomedial hypothalamic nucleus, and then in turn, the dorsomedial hypothalamic nucleus activates the locus ceruleus. So the LC is the locus ceruleus. And this activation is actually through orexin. Orexin is another neurotransmitter. It's released by the DMH, which activates the locus ceruleus. You can see over here that there's some crosstalk or interplay with uh, this pathway over here via the periaqueductal gray matter, but we'll come back and look at that in, a, in another video. In any case, we're at the locus ceruleus right now. Now the locus ceruleus is going to activate the IML, which is the intermediolateral nucleus. Okay? It's going to activate it via norepinephrine, as you can see right here, or noradrenaline, NA. And that activation is through an alpha-1 adrenergic receptor on the IML, or the intermediolateral nucleus. So that's going to activate the IML. Now, the IML's normal function when there's light is to inhibit the SCG. Now, the SCG is the superior cervical ganglion. So under conditions where there's light, the IML is active, it releases acetylcholine. This is generally going to be inhibitory. Um, there are some cases where it is excitatory, but here the IML is going to inhibit the superior cervical ganglion. Now why is that important? Because the superior cervical ganglion at night, when it's dark out, it's normally active. And when it's active, it's stimulating the pineal gland here to secrete melatonin, a hormone, into the blood. Okay? That's occurring at night. And notice that it's doing so, again, through an adrenergic mechanism. The superior cervical ganglion at night will release norepinephrine, which activates the pineal gland via a beta-1 adrenergic mechanism, and that triggers the pineal gland to secrete melatonin. Okay? That's what happens at night. So if you want this process of 
melatonin release to be inhibited, which is typical during the day when there's light, you need to inhibit the superior cervical ganglion. That's what the IML or intermedial lateral nucleus does. It inhibits the superior cervical ganglion, and by inhibiting the superior cervical ganglion, it can no longer release norepinephrine, therefore it doesn't activate the pineal gland, and melatonin does not get released. So all that's happening when there's light out. Okay? Now, if it's dark and there's no light, then there's no activation of these intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, or IPRGCs. And so if there's no activation of these, then none of these other structures become activated. The suprachiasmatic nucleus is inactive or inhibited. DMH, inhibited. Locus ceruleus, inhibited. Intermedial lateral nucleus, inhibited. And so all these are inhibited down this pathway if there's darkness or no light. So under those conditions, if the IML is not active, then it's no longer able to inhibit the superior cervical ganglion. And so when there's no light, superior cervical ganglion remains active, and it's able to activate the pineal gland to release melatonin. And of course, melatonin is the sleep hormone. So that's kind of interesting there. There's also another pathway where you can get the same effect, and it has to do with the suprachiasmatic nucleus's effect on this PVN, which is the paraventricular nucleus, and we're going to talk about that briefly now. So again, when there's light, we're again considering the case where there's light. Again, those intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, or IPRGCs, are going to be activated. They're going to sense that there's light, and they're going to send information down the retinal hypothalamic tract to activate the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Same start as before. However, the suprachiasmatic nucleus has a different effect uh, on the paraventricular nucleus. It's actually going to release GABA. GABA is the major inhibitory CNS neurotransmitter. So the suprachiasmatic nucleus actually inhibits the paraventricular nucleus. Okay? Now, the paraventricular nucleus, what's its function? Okay? Now, its normal function is to inhibit the IML. And when I say normal function, I mean when it's dark out. So when it's dark out, the paraventricular nucleus releases vasopressin, or VP, which acts to inhibit the intermediolateral nucleus, or the IML. But Remember from the other pathway, if it's light out, we want the IML to be active. So it would make sense for when there's light for the suprachiasmatic nucleus to inhibit the paraventricular nucleus. And that's exactly what happens. When there's light, suprachiasmatic nucleus becomes active, but it releases GABA to inhibit the paraventricular nucleus. And by inhibiting the paraventricular nucleus, PVN is no longer able to inhibit the IML, and so by default the IML, or intermediate lateral nucleus, becomes activated. And so what we see here on this pathway on the right here, that goes through the dorsomedial hypothalamic nucleus and the locus ceruleus, is that it's a series of activations. We see activation, 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 to where we activate the IML. On the left side, it's inhibition of inhibition. It's like two negatives. What happens when you multiply two negatives together? You get a positive. So if you inhibit inhibition, you get net activation. So actually, actually through both of these pathways, even though the right one is excitatory and the left one's inhibitory, both of them in the presence of light will lead to the same net effect. Activation of the intermedial lateral nucleus, or IML, which you can see here is in the spinal cord, and then that will actually be able then to inhibit the superior cervical ganglion, which then by default means the pineal gland is not active and you don't get melatonin release. But of course when it's dark out and there's no light, uh, the suprachiasmatic nucleus will not be active. And so this excitatory pathway will not be active, leading to inhibition of the IML. And the PVN will actually be active, so it will be able to inhibit the IML. Either way, when it's dark out and there's no light, the intermedial lateral nucleus will be inhibited. That means that it won't be able to inhibit the superior cervical ganglion, meaning it will be active, and it will be able to activate the pineal gland to release melatonin. So hopefully that makes sense. And that right there is the gist of how the suprachiasmatic nucleus is ultimately able to regulate the function of the pineal gland. And so when the suprachiasmatic nucleus is activated, it inhibits melatonin release. 
but when the suprachiasmatic nucleus is inhibited, when there's no light, you get melatonin release because that's what's supposed to happen when it's dark out. It's night, you're supposed to get melatonin release, which plays some important roles, hormonally speaking, to help us fall asleep and stay asleep. And you can see here that the suprachiasmatic nucleus does so through two different pathways, one of complete excitation and one of inhibition of inhibition. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.